A nucleic acid is a linear polymer of monomers we call nucleotides. Now, sometimes when describing nucleic acids, instead of using the word nucleotides, we sometimes use nucleosides. But nucleosides and nucleotides are two different things. So, in this lecture, we're going to discuss what the nucleoside and nucleotide is and what the difference between these two things actually is. So, let's begin by describing nucleosides. So, all a nucleoside is, it's this unit, it's a molecule that consists of a sugar molecule attached covalently via a beta-glycosidic bond to a base. And this is one example of a nucleoside. So, in this particular nucleoside, the sugar is a ribose sugar. And what that means is, this nucleoside will be found on the RNA molecule. Now, what about the base? Well, the base in this particular case is adenine. And the way that we name this nucleoside is simply adenosine. Now, if this base was guanine, then we'd call it guanosine. If this was cytosine, we'd call it cytidine. And if this was uracil, we'd call it uridine. Now, if we take and we remove this OH group, then we essentially change our sugar ribose sugar into the deoxyribose sugar. And now this would no longer be adenosine, it would be deoxyadenosine. And likewise, if this was deoxyribose and guanosine, we'd call it deoxyguanosine and so forth. So these are the four nucleosides found in RNA and these are the four nucleosides found in DNA molecules. And notice that the linkage between the carbon found on the sugar and the nitrogen found on our base is the beta-glycosidic linkage. Now, this bond here is also coming out of the board. And what that means is, if this sugar molecule was found on the plane of the board, this entire base will be found above the plane of that sugar. And so what that means is, the base group, in this case, it's the adenine, lies above the plane of the sugar molecule. So when we normally draw nucleosides, this is how we portray our nucleoside. So all a nucleoside is, it's basically the nucleotide minus the phosphate group. So the way that we define a nucleotide is basically by saying we have a nucleoside that contains at least one phosphate group. Now, before we go on to nucleotides, let's mention one more thing about nucleosides. So notice that the bond in a nucleoside that connects these two different molecules is always between carbon number one, one prime on the sugar, and a nitrogen found on the base. Now, if the base is a purine, and that means we have, a, uh, we have these two fused rings, then this nitrogen number one will always be bound to carbon number one. If this base was a pyridine, when we have only a single ring, then a nitrogen would be nitrogen number one. So the bond always takes place between carbon number one and a nitrogen atom found on our base. Now, let's move on to nucleotide. So, the only difference between a nucleoside and a nucleotide is, in nucleotides, we have the sugar and the base as well as at least one of the phosphate groups attached to carbon number five on that sugar. Now, sometimes, as we'll see in just a moment, the phosphate group can also be attached to carbon number three, but usually in natural nucleotides found inside our body, we have the phosphate groups attached onto carbon number five. So, a nucleoside attached to one or more phosphate groups is called the nucleotide. And in, most bio and in most biological nucleotides, the phosphate group is attached to the fifth carbon on that sugar. Now, perhaps one of the most prototypical examples, the most famous examples of a nucleotide is adenosine 5-triphosphate or ATP. So this is the molecule that our cells and our body uses to basically store and generate energy 
for different types of cellular processes. So in this particular case, the sugar is a ribose sugar because we have that OH group on the second carbon. Notice that our base, just like in this case, is adenine. And here, unlike here, we have the phosphate groups. And for ATP, we have one, two, three of these phosphate groups. And so we have a negative charge here, a negative charge delocalized here, and two negative charges delocalized among those three oxygen atoms. Now, how do we name nucleotides? Well, this is our genetic formula that we basically have to use when we name the nucleotide that we're dealing with. So we begin with the sugar base, so that's the nucleoside. Then we move on to the type of linkage that exists between the sugar and the phosphate groups. And then we move on to the number of phosphate groups that we have. So if we have a single phosphate group, that's monophosphate. If we have two phosphate groups, that's diphosphate. Three phosphate groups, as in this case, that's triphosphate. So let's take a look at the ATP molecule. So what type of sugar base, what type of nucleoside do we have in this particular case? Well, the sugar is a ribose sugar and this base is adenine and that means we have adenosine and that's exactly why this is adenosine. Now, the linkage is between carbon number five on that sugar and what that means is this is five prime and how many of these phosphate groups do we have attached to the five prime end? Well, we have three phosphate groups and so that's exactly why this is uh, adenosine 5-triphosphate or simply 5' prime ATP where A is adenosine, T is tri and P is phosphate. Now let's look at another example, another type of biological molecule that we can find inside our body is the following molecule and this is quite different in four different ways. So this differs from the ATP in four different ways. First of all, the type of sugar differs. In this particular case, it's D, uh, in this particular case, it's the ribose sugar. In this particular case, it's the deoxyribose sugar. The second difference is, in this particular case, we have guanine. In this case, we have adenine. And also notice that in this particular case, we have the prototypical linkage, linkage on a five prime end, but here we have the linkage on the three prime end. And unlike here where we have three of these phosphate groups, we have one phosphate group here. So the way that we name this molecule is in the following manner. So what type of sugar base, what type of nucleoside are we dealing here? Are, are we dealing here with? So the sugar is a deoxyribose and that means we're dealing with one of these four choices. Since we have our guanine, that means we're dealing with deoxyguanosine. So deoxyguanosine is that sugar base. Now the linkage is not between five prime carbon, it's between the three prime carbon and that means this is three prime. And finally, because we have only one phosphate group, not three, this last part is monophosphate. So deoxyguanosine is the nucleoside, 3' prime monophosphate is where that single phosphate group is actually attached to on that sugar. Now the shorthand way of writing that is 3' prime DGMP where D is deoxy, G is our guanosine, M is mono and P is phosphate. And this 3' prime basically tells us where that phosphate group is attached to on our sugar molecule. Now in DNA molecules, we have four types of nucleotides. We have deoxyadenylate, we have deoxyguanolate, and so forth. So four of these different types of uh, nucleotides and notice that because we have the deoxy, that simply means we don't have that oxygen uh, found on the second carbon. And so if we want to describe the four different types of nucleotides on RNA molecules, we simply remove our deoxy term from this term, this term, and this term. Now because we don't have a thymine in RNA, this will be different in RNA. Now the last thing I'd like to talk about is how we actually write down our sequence 
of nucleotides in a DNA molecule. So let's suppose we have the following three nucleotide nucleic acids. So since we're dealing with our deoxyribosugar, this is a DNA molecule. Now, the direction that we write our DNA molecule in is beginning at the 5 prime end and ending at the 3 prime end. So, to see what we mean by that, let's label our carbon. So, this is carbon prime 1, so 1 prime, 2 prime, 3 prime, 4 prime, and 5. 5 prime. So this is the 5 prime end and we can basically carry this same process out with all of these. Uh, this is 4 prime and this is 5 prime. The same thing here. 1 prime, 2 prime, 3 prime, 4 prime and 5 prime. Uh, there should be two H's, not one H right over here. And this should have an H and this should have an H. Okay, so this here is the five prime end and this here is the three prime end. And notice, just like in proteins, in nucleic acids, we also have polarity. So the five end is polar because we have this negative two charge as a result of the phosphate. And this end is also polar because we essentially have this OH group. And so that's exactly why we have polarity along our nucleic acid. So nucleic acids have polarity. We have the beginning, the five end, and the end, the three end. And the, and, and the five end always contains at least one of these phosphate groups attached onto that carbon number five. So this is the five end, this is the three end, and instead of drawing out this entire nucleic acid every single time, this is the shortcut mechanism that we can basically use to write out this entire sequence. So this is the beginning, the five end, and we simply write that type of base. So we have adenine A, we have guanine, that's G, and we have cytosine, that's C. And every time we write this, we know this is the picture that we should be imagining inside our heads. So this is how you basically write our nucleic acids. And this is the major difference between nucleosides and nucleotides. Nucleotides incorporate the phosphate groups, but the nucleosides are basically the sugar molecule attached to our base minus those phosphate groups.